So, Ms. Parsegian, I see you're a non-legacy, applying to Yale, and you're half white and half Asian. You're a bit high in the totem pole. I don't think your chances are good. But if you got $200,000, I can make you a half black, half Native American disabled student with a perfect SAT, SAT score that will for sure get you in. What do you think? $200,000? That's a, that's a bit much. I mean, I studied. What? Yeah, you're a... Uh, your people are unfortunately too common in our school, so if you want to get in, that's one for sh for sure way of doing it. But I studied. What what about my SAT scores? I did it all on my own. Yeah, and then that yeah, it doesn't really matter right now. It doesn't. What the um, fine. What do I gotta do? <laughs> Put me in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. We went too far with. Put me in a wheelchair. I don't know. <laughs> Break my legs off. Shit. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, I'm getting we're we're going straight at it right now. What's up guys? This is Juice as always here with Reen. Yeah, um Reen had a thing or two to say about this, so I figured we'd jump right in. <laughs> what what's what's going on, Reen? Nothing much, man. What's up, kids? Welcome to the iFox with Juice podcast, of course. I'm in the hot seat kind of introducing the show, but you know, we had to put a little twist in it, you know what I mean? Because this whole college, you know, cheating scandal has really got me all angered. It's fucking nuts, man. I, I know it's been going on forever. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But it's just crazy. The amount of money that's been, like, thrown, especially from, like, Lori Laughlin and, you know, for her two daughters. So Yeah, I definitely, I definitely get you. I definitely wanted to say, have you say your two you know, your piece because you're actually more invested in this because you've actually gone to school and are basically still going, right? Yeah, I'm still going. You know, I'm a mom. I work full time. I'm going yeah. to college still. And I'm not rich. Definitely not because shit, I wouldn't be like working and, you know, going to school. But it's like, it, it just angers me. You know, I feel like I want, why should I even try? You know, that's yeah, how I, know. I feel about it. I know you're definitely not alone in that. Yeah. It, <laughs> it also to to everybody listening, don't worry, this is still an MMA show. But given our last episode, we just had a lot of fun just being real loose and just kind of talking about whatever. I figured we'd just sprinkle a little bit more of that in a little bit for our sake, but also eh, maybe for you guys, maybe you get a little different taste, a little peek into some of the other stuff is that we talk about. But um yeah, my two cents is just like I feel like I feel like this is yeah, as you said, it's been going on for a long time. It's kind of one of those things that's like you always knew, but you just didn't want to hear it, and uh, now it's out in the open, and it's really bringing up a lot of questions about other things, and it's definitely made me reconsider some things about affirmative action, and given <laughs> I would sometimes give rich people a chance, like eh, they're not so bad, like eh, they, they, let let them be, but. This is ridiculous. This is so wrong. Yeah, it's tough, man, because, I mean, these students that get in because of, you know, mommy and daddy, they're they're portrayed as being athletes or whatever and when they're not, you know, and it's just it's just so nutty to me. And yeah, it's kind of pouring into the MMA community. You know, I heard um, the guys from uh, If I Did It, If the Shoes Fits, you know, bloody elbow dudes, they were talking about it, too they were getting all fired up about it as well. So it's, you know, we're not the only ones that were like talking about it because it's real shit, man. I mean, everybody, everybody tries to do their best, you know what I mean? And, but just got some assholes out there that just want to use the system and bribe their way into it or cheat their way into the system. So. Yeah. Like that was just the only, I laughed when I first heard this cause I was like, well, that's, that's just me. I tend to laugh about really fucked up shit, but the thing that I, I couldn't get, I couldn't wrap my head around until I started reading more into it. It's like, oh, why would they go to these lengths? And I always knew that you could make a donation and give these schools money and, you know, you have a very, very good chance of getting in. But apparently the chances aren't that high anymore. 
so people are going to these links to guarantee that their kids would get in. And I guess my biggest takeaway of this was not to feel bad for rich people again, but I, I was just kind of mad at the 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 ignorance of these parents that this whole thing of why they want to get their kids in it seems the kids basically weren't in on it from all accounts it seems like it seems like the parents are doing this for like status and for their own ego and you know the kids didn't suffer anything but it just i i i hate that even though that they're rich and privileged and all this shit that they're basically just like trying to mold their kids into something that they're not and i don't care whether you're rich poor black white or whatever you are i don't i don't i don't like that people are trying to make people something they're not especially when it's kids so in a, in a way i don't feel bad for them it just it just upsets me yeah it's pretty crazy right it's it's like it's the same as forcing your kid to fight or learning you know to learn how to fight when they yeah. don't want to so just man don't force your kids because it's gonna come back to you like Lori's, you know situation <sighs> Hallmark let her go. All this shit's happening now because she forced her kids to go to to USC when they didn't want to, you know. So, yeah, man, just yeah, take that advice. Don't force your kids to do anything. Just be happy, you know. Definitely be happy, be happy with what. You, definitely be happy with what you got, you know. Yeah, let them a be lot, kids. A lot of poor people say that it's very and it's hard for them to say, and they can do it. Rich people can do it too. Yep. So. Yeah, but moving on from that, we're getting into some MMA stuff. So UFC London this weekend. Uh, we're not reviewing uh, anything because uh, we did a bonus episode over the weekend. If you guys didn't hear it, go ahead and catch that. We talked about, and I'm forgetting the card already. What was it, Rain? Jesus Christ! The, the, the Wichita card. Wichita, holy shit! <laughs> You're drunk. <laughs> I was drunk. Right now, I'm just hopped up on ca- I'm caffeine. But yeah, I was like, oh my god, what was that? Yeah, uh, if you guys want to hear our thoughts on uh, our thoughts on Wichita, uh, go back and listen to it. We, it was a bonus episode. We didn't even number it because we were just kind of fucking about. But uh, I enjoyed it. I know Reen enjoyed it. Yeah, that was fun. Like we did it right after the show. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just just our reaction on it. So that was cool. And we talk about rap and comic book characters and all kinds of other weird random shit but yeah if you want to check it out go ahead it's uh, i think it's worth it but uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna talk about ufc london happening this uh this weekend and pretty pretty good fights it seems like a lot of people are jacked for it especially the main event jorge masvidal and darren till should be should be well i have some interesting thoughts on it but let's start from the, the bottom up we've chosen a few about one of the early fights is uh, Joe Duffy. He's back. He's fighting uh, Mark Jacasey. This should be a really, really entertaining, interesting fight. But I don't know. Joe Duffy has not fought since he got knocked out by James Vick at UFC 217. What, over two years now? No, uh, about what, year and a half? A year now? Yeah, a little bit over a year now. Like November 2017 is the last time he fought. Yeah, so almost a year and a half that he's been out. And Jacasey, that's not, you know, that's he's he shouldn't be an easy guy to beat, but he's on a three fight losing streak, so they're both kind of in a must win situation. Um, Jacasey came in as a hot prospect, as did Duffy, but kind of hit a, a skid right here. Um, I'll let you start, Rain. What what, have, what are you thinking about this one? Dude, this is a fun fight. Oh man, the Bone Crusher. I like mm-hmm. Mark. God, as soon as he like entered the UFC, I was so excited for him. But yeah, he's been on a, a bit of a decline. He's a flashy guy. I love his fighting style. But I don't know if that's going to be something he would want to do with a guy like Joe Duffy. He may have to be a little bit more technical, probably use his wrestling more. But man, I just love his like his flashiness. He he's like almost like a tiny like Izzy, Israel Adesanya type kind of fighter to me but i mean he can like pick up some people and just slam me on the on the on the canvas right he's a strong little dude yeah he has like those like hulk out moments you know yeah <laughs> like, but he doesn't look slam. right but, but he's not a big dude at all but he could mm. just he can slam a dude so i actually have the bone crusher for this one just because you know duffy's been out injuries whatever he's been dealing with mark he's back in his um he's back at home again just training i guess for this fight he wasn't with at&t 
or ATT. <laughs> ATT. <laughs> Sorry. Um, American Top Team. He wasn't with American Top Team. He's training at home. So he's actually having a, a, a good time with this one, uh, spending time with his family and not, you know, going hard with the training. Um, I think he knows that if he doesn't win this, it might be over for him. So he's just trying to have fun and not, you know, put too much pressure on himself. So kind of like leaning on him with this one. You know what? When we started this, I really had no dog in the fight here. And it's funny because all of everything you said is making me pick Duffy. I think he will have pressure because he is in his home. Uh, I don't think London's his home city, but it's, he's, he's in England. He's in his home country. Oh, yeah, he's from... South Yorkshire. Man, I, I think the crowd's going to go nuts for him, and I, I I think he'll feel the pressure. Duffy Duffy did have some injuries, but he was also having some contract issues, if I remember right, uh, which is not great, but it's better than just Dominic cruising it, breaking your ankle and then breaking your shoulder and getting your fucking knee torn apart. <laughs> You know, so um, it's not good, but uh, the the James Vick fight, he was doing pretty good, got knocked out in the last couple of seconds. It's been a while. I'm not scared of him um, coming back too soon from a devastating knockout or anything like that. And Duffy, we got to remember, too, he's very good on the ground. He He's a, a solid boxer. I think some people have forgotten that, too. He's a very good boxer, but, you know, I mean, remember, he's with Conor McGregor. He's, yeah, I believe he's a Japanese Japanese jiu-jitsu black belt and um, from what I've seen of Jacasey I don't see any reason of why he's gotten better on the floor so I think Duffy's gonna take it probably a second round submission moving on from that one uh, Nathaniel Wood Nathaniel Wood versus Jose Quinones Nathaniel Wood they, they I believe his nickname is the prospect <laughs> I love oh. that nickname. Oh, oh I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of like the whole BJ Penn thing, like, be, you know, be the prodigy. I mean, he was yeah. a prodigy. Wood is the prospect, um, and he's fighting uh, Jose Quinones uh, from the original tough Latin America Mexican dude. So, you know, holla. But uh, I didn't know that he's actually on a pretty good win streak. He lost his UFC debut against Alejandro Perez, but he's on a four-fight winning streak. And uh, he last beat uh, your boy, Ishihara. But yep. that was last year. That's uh, that was last February. So he's been on a he's been on a he's been had a bit of a layoff. But Nathaniel Wood, man, I mean, he fought just a few months ago. He fought on the Jones Gustafson card and he choked out Andre Andre Ewell Ewell. Sorry, Andre Ewell. I can never say that name right. And I really like Ewell, Ewell too. I followed him even in the LFA. He, I think he's a very promising guy, and he made it look so easy. He beat the shit out of him and then choked him out in the third round because. Fuck it, why not? He could have easily won the decision, but he still decided to choke him out. And then in his uh, debut, he choked out Johnny Eduardo. And I know Johnny Eduardo is like 100 years old, and he's not who he once was, but that's a very respected veteran. To take him out like that is very impressive. Um, fortunately, I got to go against the Mexicans, so I'm, I'm picking wood here. I, I think <laughs> <laughs> I kinda, I'm kind of always doing that, aren't I? But yeah, I, I really think wood's the real deal. Still early in his career. I'm not going to, you know, he's 25 years old. I'm not going to go all out. He's at Bantamweight, which is a very, very good division right now. But I think give it some time. I think within two years, if he's not champion, I mean, I think he'll for sure fight for a title within 18 months to two years. I think he's bound for it. Man, I have the same. I'm going for Wood, too. He's fun, man. And he's fighting in his hometown, right? I think he's from London, too. So this should be a good one. 2-0 in the UFC, finishes by sub. He's 25 years old. God damn, he's so young. Yeah, he yeah he is from London. So, yeah, this is... And, you know, he fought in Cage Warriors, which is pretty big in Europe and, and in England, so... Yeah, 15-3 and three overall. I mean, mm-hmm. he has more fights than um, Quinones. Mm-hmm. Quinones. Did I pronounce that right? I, I like how you say it. Want to say it again? Quinones. <laughs> it's funny because it sounds like you're almost saying it with a Japanese accent. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's uh, properly it's Quinones. The, the first N is like a ny. It's kind of kind of hard hard to say to non Spanish speakers, but it's ny Quinones. Quinones. There you go. There you go. That's much better. Quinones. Oh, right. Got it. Quinones yeah. is seven and two overall. So. Yeah, just on paper, man. And this kid's so young, so I'm I'm excited to watch him again. So for real, it's the prospect. Yeah, yeah. And I do respect you trying on that one. That you did a lot better than most people. No, for real, that was that was good. That was I'm good. 
<laughs> and, and also earlier, because I didn't address it, I was not making fun that you said AT&T. I was kind of more laughing that I'm surprised more people don't say that. Because I always think that, but I just never really say it out loud. <laughs> yeah. I know, little, right? It just came out. I, I get it. I get it. It happens. It's crazy. And I'm, I'm like staring at my fucking top team, like jersey right now <laughs> I'm, I'm like i know this <laughs> oh, you, have a, you have an att jersey the fuck it top team one. Oh, okay yeah, yeah. i'm staring at that one right now <laughs> <laughs> and i still said it wrong but <laughs> yeah it happens okay so moving on another fight man this has got to be one of the most anticipated fights of the night dominic reyes versus vulcan uh vulcan Ozdemir. Right, yeah, Reyes is another one that I've had my eye on since uh, LFA, but yeah, I'll let you start on this one, Rain. Dude, I'm going with Reyes, man. I don't know about Vulcan. I'm not sold on him yet. He 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 fought for the title, and you're not sold on him yet, dude. Like, <laughs> but look at what happened. No, and I'm not even questioning you. Like, oh, you're being ridiculous. <laughs> no, he, he was in the right place at the right time and got some good, solid wins at. You know, at a time when the division was very weak. Yeah. So, and and I think Ozdemir is a good fighter. I just think his style um, is just bound for problems. It's good for light heavyweight. He can get far in that division, but you know, it, it's it's just not enough. Especially Reyes. He, Reyes is a is a stud athlete. Uh, yeah. Very very good striker. I, I think he's one of the best strikers in the division, to be honest. And I'll put that up against whoever, whether it's John Jones or. You know, uh, any of these guys in the Gustafson, any of these guys in the division, I think he's up there, pure striking wise. That's, um, that's why I'm like wondering if, if he might get knocked out because of the way he moves in, he moves forward. So with Reyes, it, it's a possibility that he might get knocked out with this one. That Reyes might get knocked out? No, that Reyes might knock him out. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Reyes definitely has the power to do that to Ozemir. I, I don't know if he's ever been knocked out in his career. He. He got TKO'd by Cormier, but that was a crucifix. That's almost like a submission. That doesn't really count as a TKO in my eyes because it's just like you can't do anything. You 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 lose like on a pin. It's like a wrestling move, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he got submitted by Smith, which I didn't see coming. But Smith's a veteran, and he he toughed it out. But you know what? That you know Smith, Anthony Smith was his last fight, and that fight really worried me. And in a way for Ozdemir, because it seemed like his heart wasn't in it, or or I don't know if he gave up, or he just was having a bad night, or he basically gave up because they broke his nose. I'm not saying oh I'm tougher and I would have toughed it out and I would have beat that guy. I'm I'm not saying any of that, but it, it it is a rare sight to see. It's a rare sight for a professional fighter to get a broken nose and just be like yeah I'm out. Broken jaw is is something else, you know. A broken foot, you know, you're very impeded, but a broken nose, it just seems a little weird to me. I don't know if he had injuries or he's still battling injuries or if he just has a, a, a poor mindset at times or he can just, you know, he can fall through the cracks. But I, I kind of can't trust him after that. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely interesting for sure. They're both 29 years old, young yeah. little studs, man. Damn, I thought Reyes was younger. But yeah, Reyes 10-0, 4-0 in the UFC. Nah, yeah, I think he's going to. It's gonna be eleven and zero for him Saturday night. Yeah, me too. And um, man, I don't know if I'll go all out and say that he'll knock him out because that's not gonna be easy. Uh, but if he does, man, it's it's just it's it's interesting that we have a, a lieu of contenders right now because normally I think we say, well, if he wins, he's for sure next in line. But we have Tiago Santos, who I think for sure has to be next in line. And then yeah, Johnny Walker technically got hurt, but I mean, I think if Reyes wins. He should fight Walker next. I mean, if Ozdemir wins, I don't know what's next for him, but I really would love to see Reyes and Walker. And I know they're kind of two prospects. You probably don't want to face each other, but at this point, they probably should because we want Jones to fight the best, best guy, you know? Yeah. Do you think he would get cut? Vulcan will get cut after this? I don't think so. I think light heavyweight is, you know, it's like basically like heavyweight. It's like, eh. You're going to have some bad nights. And, mm-hmm. I mean, who did he lose to? I mean, it, it, well, Reyes will be a different story because we don't know what his ceiling is at right at this moment. But if you look at his two losses, he lost to the champ and he lost to basically the number one contender, the guy who just fought for the title in Smith. Now, so, 
I mean, before it was, eh, you know, it was an okay Anthony Smith. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I don't think uh, we usually don't look at go back. We usually don't go back and look at things like that. You know, it's like, what have yeah. you done now? It's like, oh, okay, he's a title challenger. Okay, that's that's respectable. Mm-hmm. You didn't lose to a guy who who had some good wins and then didn't do anything with it. You know. Yeah. So, I don't yeah. know, just Vulcan. I'm just not impressed with him, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, like, you know. He has a very weird style. He has a very yeah. weird style. It, it, it is effective, though. I, I give him props. Uh, I'm not going to say he's, like, the most skilled guy because he definitely has his flaws, but he just has a very awkward style, and I understand why it gives guys problems. But Reyes is, is very technical, and, yeah, he can do some flashy stuff, and, and he hits hard, but he's very, very good at his, at his fundamentals. And, uh... I think that's the reason he wins. I think him just keeping it basic is the reason he'll come out on top. Because Ozdemir, you know, is pretty basic, but I just think Reyes is better. I think he's more athletic, faster, stronger, and I, I think I think he's gonna come out on top. I guess most likely decision. I I can't go all in with the knockout, but I'll say he wins that decision. Yeah, he's Reyes is definitely a better fighter all around. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I'm really really looking forward to it. Uh, co-main event, Gunnar Nelson versus Leon Edwards. This is... Dude. Okay, okay. So I'm just going to go... I'm picking Leon Edwards because I, I, I just don't really like Gunnar Nelson, but I'm not confident because Gunnar Nelson has these moments where fights where he's kind of supposed to lose, he wins. And that elbow that he hit on uh, on Cowboy Oliveira in his last fight still fucking gives me nightmares. So... <laughs> <laughs> that was wicked. Oh my god, somebody died in there. He made a guy tap out because of blood. God, I know. God. And that is no disrespect to Oliveira. He's a tough motherfucker, but I don't blame him one bit. I originally had Nelson. I had Gunny, but Leon Edwards, he's never been submitted. And yeah, I know Gunny Nelson, man. He's a submission artist, but no. I think he'll probably go to a decision. And this one too, but it'll, it'll probably be Edwards' night. Cause, like you said, like I don't really trust Gunny. I know he's coming up, whatever. But Leon Edwards, he has he has wins against you know Brian Barberina and Vicente Luque. Like, oh, should he be? Oh, that's right, he did beat Luque. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Yeah, two two monsters, man. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and he almost got fucked up by Barbarina too. I still remember that he got dropped by him. I was like, "Oh my god, this is over!" And he he came back. And yeah, you, you have a good point. With I didn't know that he'd never been submitted, but I'm not surprised because he's one of these guys that, um, like uh, like in the cowboy fight, he's a he's a good striker. He's a very respectable striker, but I think his bread and butter's on the ground. I think he really is more of a grappler than a striker. So I it's hard to say that he'll keep. Nelson away from him and he can hang with him because the other thing about Nelson that bugs me is that when he wins he wins big the the Oliveira fight the uh Joe uh Joban fight Alan Joban remember he yeah beat the fuck out of him and then choked you know and he, his wins are spectacular but then he his losses like Rick Story yep. lost like every round basically um Ponzinibbio got knocked out you know like it, it's just his losses are usually really bad there's like no in between with him Oh, uh, Damian Maya just got, you know, just got suffocated for 15 minutes. It's like, he can't have like a, oh, he lost, but he did good. It's like, no, he lost and he lost big and he won and he won big. So it's really interesting given that. Yeah. Yeah. I, a good fight, man. This card is like, I don't know if people sleeping on this card or what, but these I, are I, like really good matchups. Yeah. Yeah. Again, so like I said, I, I picked, I'm picking Leon Edwards, but I'm really having a hard time figuring out what it's going to be because I don't know if he's just going to outbox the shit out of him for three rounds or if it could actually be close because I feel that Nelson could take him down. I don't think he'll do much with it, but um, I don't know. I'm still conf- Well, I, I know you're picking Edwards, but what what do you think? How do you think it'll go down? I think it'll go to decision maybe. Like close or? or it'll be a either. close. Yeah, it'll probably be a close decision. It's so tough, man, because I originally had Nelson. I originally had Gunny, but just the more I think about it, I'm like, nah, it's going to be a tough go for him. 16 yeah. and 3, he's never been finished. Leon Edwards has never been submitted, I mean. Yeah. You know what? I, I'm going for Edwards, and I, I'm going for Edwards. I, I think he's going to win, and also I don't think Edwards is going to lose to a guy who was in a in a leotard. <laughs> 
twerking, whatever the fuck that was. Reminds me of some shit out of Dodgeball. Was he in a leotard? He maybe was he was like in a singlet. Yeah, I mean, it's basically yeah. like a leotard. Yeah. I thought video was hot, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I was like, oh, goody. I like it. He's not so stiff after all. That's a little humor. All right, cool. <laughs> It's, it still freaks me out that he uh he fights with no hand wraps. That I still can't get behind that. I do not understand that. But uh, I guess props to you, Gunny. I'll, I'll I'll give you props for that. But yeah, Ed, Edwards. I'll go with a more dominant decision, but still a decision. Moving on to the main event: Jorge Masvidal and Darren Till. Okay, you. I understand the applause ring, but I'm going to say something probably controversial. I actually don't think this fight's going to be that great. What? It's whole slap season. It's back, baby. I'm excited yeah. for this. Really? Okay. Let me explain. So I, I love Masvidal, too. I like Till, too, even though he didn't take care of his kids. But, you know, a lot of Mexicans <laughs> don't take care of the kids either. So fuck Jesus. it. Whatever. What can I say? But jokes aside... I just have a feeling it's not going to be great because for some reason, I, I can't get two things out of my mind. And it's Stephen Wonderboy Thompson for both of them. Masvidal did almost nothing next uh, with Wonderboy. And I understand he's a tough guy to fight, but he just kind of seems stuck in the mud. And Till was all too willing to be very patient with Wonderboy. Uh, he won and Masvidal didn't. That's the difference. And then obviously Till's coming off of a loss against against Woodley, where he basically got humiliated. With Till being in 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 in, in England, you know, having the whole crowd behind him, the uh, same like in the Wonder Boy fight, I think he's just gonna be tense. I don't think he's gonna let off a lot of strikes. And I think Masvidal, I I know he can let it loose when he wants to, but he's been off also just like uh, Paul uh, uh Paul sorry Joseph Duffy as we said earlier, he's been off since then as well. The last time that Masvidal fought, Ioana Jacek was still champion. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for real, like, let's put it in perspective. So, it's like, I know I don't really think he'll be rusty. He seems like a guy who definitely takes things seriously and, and trains hard. But I just have a feeling that both going to be very tentative. I think there'll be some good moments. You know, they might drop each other. They might have, they might swing at the last 10 seconds of some of the rounds. But I think it's going to be very close, very contentious, and very kind of like tedious. I think they're going to stare at each other a lot. Because the thing is, I know everyone loves Masvidal, and I do too. But the thing is, especially when he was younger, I kind of have a feeling since he hasn't fought in a while, he's going to revert back to this. I think he's going to get in that mode where he's being more defensive and he's thinking he's going to win. Like, oh, he's not hitting me, so I'm winning. And he does. He's not gonna be so pressured to to throw strikes and to you know to put the pressure on Till. I think he's gonna try and counter. I think he's gonna be more defensive. And I think Till is not gonna be that offensive. So I think they're gonna be staring at each other a lot. What do you think? God damn it! I just hope we see a war. I I hope we see a lot of violence. Just all these interviews leading up to this, the one that they had with Dan Hardy. Oh, it's beautiful. Just, the, just his face, game bread, his face just lit up. He's like, fuck yeah, let's do it. You know? like Even Till, you know? Bring it. Seemed, Till seemed, I'm not going to say he seemed intimidated, but he just seemed like, yeah, like I'm in for a fight. But I don't know. I just have a feeling that they're going to have, they have so much on the line that they're just going to be nervous about something and they're just going to not fight to their full potential. Well, I I just hope that with game bread, the, his time off, his injury, this reality show he did, all that is out the door now, and he's just ready to just kill it in there. Like I want to see that. I want to see a war with this. And I was watching um, James Lynch's uh, pro picks again, and a lot of people were going for Till because he's the bigger fighter. So I yeah, get, I, I get it, you know, but it's like, come on, man. Game bread, yeah. he's been in the game for how long? He's been at this for how long? So hopefully, like, we see a really good fight with these two. That's what I'm hoping for. I hope it's not what you're saying. You know, hopefully they're not staring at each other and, you know, trying to wait for whoever makes a, the first move, whatever. I hope we see fucking violence. I'm going to be so disappointed if we don't. Okay. This fight is reminding me a lot of when they booked Till against Wonder Boy. That's what it was like. Everyone's like, oh, my God, it's going to be fucking spinning kicks and, and elbows, and it's just going to be pure violence and just artistry. 
And it, I, I really enjoyed the fight. I wasn't mad, but I definitely understand why people were kind of bored and upset with it. I just have a feeling it's going to be a similar fight to that. And like I said, Masvidal just has that, he's had that tendency. Maybe it's gone away for good, but I just kind of have a feeling he's going to revert back to it. The other thing is, as far as the pick goes, I was going to go with Masvidal because of his wrestling and his submissions, which are no joke. I've always respected him for that. I think people sleep on it way too much, and they really shouldn't at this point in the game. But I kind of have a feeling he's not going to go for it because I think he really wants to stand and bang. I think he's just going to put it on himself like this has to be a stand-up war. I took this fight because it's supposed to be exciting, and if I take him down and try and submit him, the people are going to boo. Uh, no one's going to be impressed. They're going to be like, this isn't what we signed up for. And, and uh, Masvidal is a smart guy, but he's also hood. And I don't think he's going to want to, you know, just just do the smart thing. I think he's going to be like, well, they wanted a war. I'm going to fucking give it to him. But I think he's just going to be kind of stuck in the moment. So I'm going to go with Till. I think a split decision, a close split decision. I'm going with Game Bread. That's my pick. But I'm going with Jorge. What, ba- based on what? Because this is one of those fights. It's, it's not just like, oh, well, he has power. Or, oh, he's clearly going to knock him out or submit him. Like, there's a lot of variables here. What What do you think? Why? I'm just going because I'm going for him because I'm a fan. Fuck Till. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad that he's back. He's a good dad. It's been really. so. It's been so long, and he's been wanting a fight. And uh, what happened with What happened with Nate? Nate. Nate needed an opponent. He was there. He's like, let's go. That you know, fight fell through. He's been waiting for a fight. He's been itching for a fight. Till stepped up. Let's go. He's no, game. It, it was, He's ready was, to go. It was Nick. That was, I think, was our first Nick? episode. Yeah, because we were like, oh, oh that's we right. Posted. And then, of course, I had to shit on it. And sure enough, I was right. But didn't he, like, want to fight Nate, too, or something? Or some something happened. One of them. But anyways, he's been wanting to fight for a while now. So I'm just going to go with the veteran. I'm going to go with Jorge. I know that people are, like, saying, oh, he's Till is the bigger fighter and this and that. But, nah. I'm not impressed with Till. I don't know what it is. He hasn't really shown a whole lot. And it seems like when he's under pressure, he's just, he just, he's not there. Like I said, with the Wonder Boy fight, that was one form of pressure. And then if you look at the Woodley fight, that was another form of pressure. It was like, well, this is the biggest fight of your life. You've got to, got to come through. And he basically just launched face first into Woodley's right hand. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm aware of that. Like I said, Maya, uh, Maya, what the hell? Masvidal, <laughs> I was reading something else. Masvidal definitely has his chance, definitely has power, definitely has good striking and, and submissions. You can definitely take him out in various ways, but yeah. I, I just think Till's not going to allow him for whatever reason. And I also think it's unfair that, you know, I, I, I think you're being unfair of uh, Till's, <laughs> Till's fathering abilities. Boy, I didn't say nothing about his father. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, was that was you. Me. That was me. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Hey, man. Game Bread's a gangster, but family first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, okay. So you're going with Maz at all. Finish with decision. God damn, man. It's so hard because most of his fights have gone to decision. Close decision. So, close, yeah, close decision. He has been finished since 2009. And that was back when he was in Bellator. Oh, yeah, that inverted triangle? <sighs> God damn, why you got to bring up bullshit? Because that shit was amazing. <laughs> and I'm not even saying it to make fun of him. It's like, damn, he fell victim to, like, the most rare submission in MMA. Yeah, his his ground game is... Him of all people. You know? Definitely underrated, but... Yeah. But, yeah, I'm going with green bread. Uh, even though I'm going with Till, uh, I'll still, like I tweeted earlier... Um, earlier this week, don't mess with a guy who can beat your ass in jean shorts. That video of his uh, Miami street fights are going around, and yeah, he beat the shit out of a guy in <laughs> jean shorts, man. That's a whole another level of darkness. <laughs> so awesome, man. Oh, um, just <laughs> as a side note, what do you think of his hair? It seems I know chicks have always had a thing for game bread, but it seems like uh, it seems oh like uh, they like the hair now. Oh my god, it's like it looks so super soft. <laughs> Oh, no. my. His beard, it's like full. His hair is all full. It's like, damn, dude. I wonder 
Is he gonna like braid it? Like what's what's up? He has he has to. Don't be a Benson Benson Henderson and have your hair flying all over the octagon, and basically it's for sure gonna make you lose a decision because you're gonna look dumb. Man, he looks glorious, man. Okay, it's well, all refreshed. And- it's good to know you're normal, I guess, because everyone seems to like it. Oh, well, all the women anyway. <laughs> I was staring at it earlier. It was like an MMA junkie like um, interview he was doing. I was just like, oh, my God, check that out. Like, damn. Yeah, he looks like he should be in, like, Game of Thrones <laughs> or Gladiator or some shit, you know? Right? Give, him a, shampoo, right? Give him a shampoo. Right? Give him a shampoo commercial. Like, shit, man. <laughs> like, Cuban-like product. Hair product. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, well, that does it for UFC London. When, speaking of tweets, is I'm talking about my tweet earlier. I'm going to get straight into the tweet of the week. Uh, this week's tweet of the week goes to Tango Hotel Charlie, like the name, at, at Street Villain. He tweeted, fine, 50000 Lost wages, $1 million. New smartphone, 1000 Avoiding pictures of your side piece getting out, priceless. Hashtag Conor McGregor. <laughs> For real, though, like, why is he, like, going around smashing people's phones that's so suspect we don't i don't think we know the full story on this he was at a club one of the most popular clubs in south beach i believe um at 5 a.m he was leaving right but he was supposed to be there with his family correct he was there for his mom's like birthday or something was oh my god (laughs) i wasn't aware of that yeah that's the reason why he was. it seems like a connor thing to do yeah he was in miami with his family so what is he doing at a club coming out at like 5 a.m.? He's not getting fucking donuts at 5 a.m., you know? So I'm wondering, like, if there's, like, some kind of video, picture, something that was, like, taken and he got mad. Don't don't jump to conclusions, Randy. He might be going out to get powdered donuts, in, in, you know? Some, you know what I mean? Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Powdered donuts. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah. but yeah. it's so funny. It's so funny because, like, yeah, it was, everybody's like tripping out. Yeah, that's fucked up. Connor's an asshole, blah, blah. And then, as soon as that guy's picture came out, the, the uh, victim's picture came out, everybody was shitting on him. Like, yeah, you fucking deserved it. Why? Because he was funny looking? He had a purse. He had, he was. <laughs> oh, was that him? The, oh, like, <laughs> the guy with the purse. Yes. <laughs> like the camo green outfit. Yeah. Apparently that was the dude. Oh, why did I think they started Photoshopping so many things? I was like, what is this? And in my, I thought it was like some celebrity shit, like some rapper or somebody or something just like that. So I totally missed that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so everybody was shitting on him. I'm like, God damn, that's fucked up. And then they were making fun of him, saying like, Yeah, he's a Khabib fan. That's why. Oh um, man, I I went straight into it. The I saw a lot of people tweeting like, Oh yeah, well his name is because he has like a stereotypical Muslim Arab name. That like, oh yeah, any any surprises? Like damn, dude. Like as I know some were saying that oh he's clearly a Khabib fan, but some people were kind of just like, Oh yeah, well he's Muslim. Of course he did this. Like. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. So that guy is actually suing Connor now. He well, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, why wouldn't you? You'd be yeah. dumb not to. Yeah. But it, it's the amount is only like 15000 or something. Yeah, but fuck it. So, I mean, you don't find $15,000 on the floor every day. Yeah. So it's like, all right. <laughs> you, you might just get paid out. At yeah, this Connor, point. Connor's probably thankful. It's like, you only asked for 15000 you dumb motherfucker. Fuck it. All right. Right? Right, I mean, his phone was probably a thousand, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah, he's um, filing for battery assault and emotional distress. I guess fifteen thousand is the amount for emotional distress. The distress, you know, the distress is that he wasn't the the guy that broke the story and having the the red handed evidence of Connor doing <laughs> God knows what Powder drugs, donuts. women, so many things going around with them right now. Yeah, so I mean. Connor back at it again in the news. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say this this week. Like, do you think this is a big deal? Because I got to be honest, when it first came out, I kind of thought I I don't know if I said uh, I don't know if I blew it out of proportion, but I feel like it was a bigger deal than I guess most. Is it a big deal? Did he like do a hit and run like John Jones to the pregnant lady left her there hurt in her car? No, I mean, I mean to that I mean, extreme. Close. 
It's close, Reen. It's close. Maybe <laughs> somebody's close. No, of course not. Of course not. But there's a pattern here. There's a pattern here. He just got done with his suspension, right? Or no, it will be coming up. The NSAC suspension will be up. But the bus incident, the um, yeah, the dolly, the dolly incident, the um, the community service, he just got done with that, and then now he's dealing with this shit. So mm-hmm. it's like, okay, there's a pattern here. Are you angry? What's going on with you? You know, is this too much? If if it's a fan doing this, then maybe you, you should appreciate that you have fans. I mean, this is this is why you're here, right? This is why you blew up so much because of your fans. Why are you doing this to your fan? Like, if you don't like the light like this, if you don't like the fame, then what the fuck are you doing in South Beach of all places? He's Get a the career. Fuck out of there. He's a career criminal. You know how them immigrants be. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, seriously, on that note, it's like that's like. That's probably the reason why I kind of blew it up when it when it first came out. Like thinking of his situation, I, I'd kind of not that I forgot about the Dolly incident, but just I guess I kind of forgot how recent it was. And then once I realized that, and 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 I remembered everything, I was like, man, I, like this isn't the biggest deal, no. But I don't understand how he he's not concerned for honestly his immigration status. Like, yes, I know he has money, yes, and but immigration is a weird thing. Like he still has he's not. I don't think he even has any property here. I mean, he seems very in love with Ireland, but it's like, dude, you you got a job to do. You you can't fight in Ireland, basically, you know, because the money's not there. I know the UFC, you know, bends over backwards for you, but they're not going to host fights in Ireland or other countries for you. You have to come to the States. And, like, I know whatever, maybe he was with somebody else. Maybe, you know, like as, as the tweet said, maybe he was trying to hide from something, but it's like, man, you really got to think things out, man. Well, Put push that off to the side for a minute. But what about his kid and his girl? Like you're out there with your family, and then you're getting uh, arrested for some dumb shit like this. Those pesky things, family. Eh, you got you got money and hookers and blow to do. Rain. He's eh, there's bigger things in life. I think. Man, I don't know what's going on with D, but I've been like, what the hell are you doing, bro? Like, what's going on? We're we gonna keep doing this. Do I have to keep continuing to like wipe your ass and take care of our child too? Well, I'll be so bad. I would be so upset if I was his, but hey, whatever. She's, also, guess, get, she's also getting p- p- paid. So Yeah, that's true, to, to put up with his bullshit. Because she, she knows all the secrets, right? She knows where everything's buried. Yep. She, she's basically the one that paid his way into this, right? Because she's the one that was holding it down, going to work. Yeah, like yeah. He was sitting there collecting the welfare check and shit. So she basically could take everything. Yeah. Yep. Because if it wasn't for her, he would not be where he's at. But they're not married because Connor's an honorable man like that. That's true, right? (laughs) Hey, but it's okay. John Jones has been engaged to his fiance for like eight years. (laughs) Yeah, I'm. I'm not so secret. That's that's weird to me, man. It's a bullshit move. It's. uh, it's, I'm sorry. I'm. Especially he's like a god, like. uh, He's all into God and this and that, but you're not going to marry your girl? Yeah, I'm going to just go out and say it. It, it really is a piece of shit move, um, it, especially with him, because it's like, oh, yeah, of course I'm going to make an honest woman out of you eventually. You know, it's not it's not like uh, John Jones has a thing of like, oh, well, th- we don't have enough money right now, or it's not the right time. And they already have like three fucking kids, man. It's just him like, well, I give you the ring. You have to stick around. And so, that way they don't. Yeah, and that way it's like, well, we're not married. You leave if you want. I got nothing to lose. So weird, man. And the the the, the females, the, the women that put up with that shit. But whatever, man. Like you said, when you're getting paid, you don't really care. When you're yeah, getting, the, you're being taken care of, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it applies to John Jones as well here. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> I know I, I may get hate for that. I'm sure there's people listening to this who have know people like that or maybe even done it, but... You might get more leniency given that you're a normal person, but I really don't give leniency to someone like Connor or definitely Jones. It's a piece of shit move to me. But yeah. keeping with Connor, <laughs> my proxy, talking about Polly Malinaji. The girlfriend, that fucking like the side chick, the side chick that got dumped. That's what he's acting like. The angry little side chick. But you know what? At the same time, not, not to defend Polly or anything, because I didn't even like him when he was a boxer. Great commentator, but not. I, I just never been a fan of him. 
aside from his commentating, but it's so easy. He's seen how easily triggered Connor is about his homeboy Artem. So he figures if I fight him, especially in basically a boxing match, I'll beat the shit out of him, probably humiliate him, and Connor's going to come defend him because, of course, he's going to because that's his boy. See, I don't think he will. At this point, he's like, why? Why? He, it doesn't seem like he has the desire to fight, and especially if he knows that there's going to be a chance where he's going to get his ass beat. I'm not even saying it's realistic. I'm just saying that given his patterns and given his history, it's logical for Polly to think that. I'm not mad at oh, him yeah. for going that route, you know? Yeah, because he's a little delusional right now. I can't believe he's, like, doing this. But, hey, more power to you, you know? If you, if you, if you want to come back and just do the bare knuckle thing. But I want to him- see it because that's, that's a legit boxer. Although I'm, I wasn't yeah. a big fan, like, he's very technical. And that's the that was the problem with him. He used to be pretty boring because it's like he did – the you know the it was, he was very Mayweatherish in that way you know so but he didn't have any of the trash talk or any of the flashiness it was just kind of very very basic basic stuff but I mean when it comes to bare knuckle boxing he can really fuck people up because he's not gonna put himself in harm's way you know he's not yeah. just gonna stand and bang he's he can really outclass people yeah that's what I'm scared of like is he gonna kill somebody in there probably not he never Seriously. had power he never had power <laughs> but um. It's gonna be bare this time, and then it's it's mostly like MMA fighters that are going in there and fighting. Yeah, exactly, and it's usually MMA fighters who never really had the greatest. It, it seems like most of the people that I've seen, they were like brawlers. They're like, oh yeah, they, they they were never even really that skilled, and they definitely don't have much wrestling or jujitsu. It's just like, well, they can hit hard or they like to stand and bang, but they didn't have too much technical ability. Yeah, so. Polly is going to be fighting, I think, June-ish or something. But I think Artem is going to be fighting soon, fairly soon. Yeah, I think next month he's fighting Jason Knight. I don't know who Polly's fighting. I just know yeah. that he's going to fight. But yeah, uh, Artem is fighting. Either. I do want to see Artem and Jason Knight. I'm not going to lie about that one either. Jason Knight's still still awesome. Hick Diaz lives on. Yeah, so I was watching the interview with him and Luke Thomas, Polly and Luke Thomas. And he's just like, what the hell am I going to do with Artem? Like, he's just Connor's floor mopper. Like, what has he done with the sport? And Luke's like, well, you know, you got to give it to him. He is a fan favorite. So it will bring a lot of eyes to the sport, a lot of, you know, eyes to your fight. He's just like, no, no, I, I really don't want that. And But I kind of want to see it. Polly and Artem? Yeah, I kind of want to see it. Yeah, of course, we all do. I mean, Artem is just, <laughs> as you said, like, what does Luke Thomas say that? The, the fans like him or whatever. I mean, we like yeah. him for the memes and the jokes. Yeah, he's a goat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he he definitely could generate a lot of buzz with this, especially with, you know, his his best friend being Connor. So, I mean, I think I'll be, I think it'll be fun leading up to it and then actually the actual fight too. Yeah. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if Connor would be like at the fight too, front row. Then it would jump in the cage like you did a or shit and <laughs> jump on him like a fucking spider monkey and push the ref and Yeah, it'll definitely be a, a show for show. <laughs> and then Dylan Dennis is gonna get assaulted again and fucking Oh god, Dylan. Yeah. Th- this whole thing with Dylan and Ben, that's hate, fun. That's the hate fun too. that he suffered. Yeah, th- that's fun too, but that's a different topic. <laughs> oh but that, will you stop with him? Will you stop with oh with Ben? Yeah, stop, stop, please. Ben's please. gonna be there. Ben's gonna be in London. Oh uh, yeah, that's another. God damn it, man. <laughs> He's talking shit. You know what though? I, I know I I picked against Mazadol, but I give Mazadol credit. He basically called Ben a bitch for not taking the rematch. He said that was a coward move to not to not take the rematch, especially given the way that he won. I'm like, oh my yeah. man. Oh um, yeah, he's talking hell of shit. I was so I was laughing. I was like, well, he's like, I don't want to talk about him. Why should I even like give him any like any light to this right now? But he could he could squeeze the juice out of watermelons. <laughs> oh my god! Fuck Ben Askren, man. I would. And then you, this whole boom, the boom roasted thing is is just driven me up a wall, man. It's making me hate him even more. I, I really. <laughs> I really thought it was just like, oh, I don't like him, so anything he says, I'm not gonna like. But no, I'm not down with the boom roasted thing. I'm 
was starting to say, every time I read a tweet or something like that no. to myself, I'm like, boom, roasted. No, no, <laughs> no, you're not. Oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. I guess we all see, you know, what triggers me now with, uh, say, Askren's name and it all comes out. <laughs> so. I, I, I forgot who tweeted this or who posted, but they're like, oh, yeah, Ben Askren's here. And, yes, he's in flip-flops. <laughs> so I think it was Brett Okamoto or something. I, I forgot who who uh, tweeted that, but he's here in flip flops. Of course, put, man. That's all he has. Put a fucking suit on, man. Even get loafers. I don't get. God damn him. God damn no, him. Man. No. He's gonna wear a button down with slacks on and flip flops. That's his style. He did that before. Somebody fucked him. He has kids, man. I can't believe this shit. This, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did you just say something? God damn it, man. Lord. God damn it. I know he's an Olympian. I know he's very accomplished and he could beat my ass. But Jesus Christ, just looking at him was like, yeah, that dude actually has a family. Dude, I, I forgot who said. Oh, it was Till. He's like, your chin sticks out so much. Mm-hmm. And I started staring at his chin. I was like, he's right. Oh my God, that chin is horrible. I didn't okay. realize it until he like really pointed that out. Like a quagmire, uh, Jay Leno. You haven't know, seen that picture where his chin sticks out more than his nose? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I think that's what he was referring to. to Darren Till. He was like referring to that picture. And I'm like, oh my God, he's right. I uh, never realized that until then. But yeah, it's just funny, man. God damn him. <laughs> so you're, you're so bothered right now. Yeah, I don't like that guy. Never did, never will. Anyway, moving on to more serious subjects. Uh, came to light earlier today that uh, there had been some questions with Tony Ferguson in the past couple of days that there had been some kind of uh, incident with his family. There was really no telling what. People kind of assumed domestic violence, but it was so vague. It could have been someone that maybe threatened his family or who knows if there was a drive-by or something. You never know. But it, it came to light today that uh, his wife had filed a restraining order because he'd been acting very strange lately. It says domestic violence, but it's more of domestic violence. He it hasn't shown anything of him actually hitting her in any way, although he did throw holy water on her. The dude's out of his mind, and, you know, even more so than usual. It's just very, very concerning. Um, I'm, I'm bringing this up just because I've seen uh, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter, and, and I'm actually surprised for once. Twitter's actually being pretty nuanced and, and respectful, like, Everyone's just wishing the best for Tony, and I'm with him too. It's like that that's very scary. That's very scary, you know. You can only f- imagine how the kid's only two years old, so, you know, no telling you what's going on there. But the wife especially is like she's scared for herself, for her son, and, and for her husband, and she feels bad, and she wants him to get help because he's been acting very irrationally. But I'm glad that people are nuanced enough and, and, and can have some pity and some empathy to know that he's not meaning to do these things. If if what what's coming out is true, is like he's he's just not in a good place. He's not trying to hurt anybody intentionally anyway. But he's definitely got some demons going on. Yeah, whatever whatever he's going through, I hope I hope he gets help. It's just so sad. It's rough to talk about all of it because it's you know like we were kind of saying off air. It's like it sounds like we're excusing him. It sounds like oh well he's he's a good guy. He's not. He didn't mean it, you know, that's that, that cliche thing of, you know, beating women. It's like, oh, that's not him. He's not, he doesn't really mean it. He just lost his temper, blah, 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 blah. But, uh, it, I mean, it seems applicable here because, you know, I, I don't know. If, I haven't heard much of him being an asshole as far as, like, with his family. So if he's doing all I mean, he said that he had a computer chip in his leg and he's been yeah. super paranoid. I mean, like, it's clearly very irrational. It's It's not it's not normal and the only question is you know we joked about maybe he took a lot of something you know he was hanging out with eddie bravo and took him in the <laughs> yeah ayahuasca who knows but uh, uh, kidding aside i mean given his profession it's very obvious that it could be cte yeah. and um and then the other thing is too regarding mental health um People think it's like you're born with it and it's like, oh, you just 
you're crazy and progressively get crazier. It's like sometimes it just manifests itself in weird ways and at different ages. Some people could be 15 and some people could be 40 and it's like, oh yeah, they just they just lost it. So who knows if this is like really deep seated, uh, really deep seated, or if uh, it's trauma related. But either way, it's very very concerning and very scary. Yeah, I mean, I read that you know he was able to take the, his son home or whatever, and it was cool. But you know they were just concerned with his behavior. They just want him to get help. Yeah, I mean, and his wife said right that she's not worried that he'll hurt their kid he just she just wants him to get help and but obviously given that she has somebody who's unstable she definitely has to go to the cops in one way or another because something happens you you know you got to do something to protect yourself in one way or another yeah remove your child from that so mm-hmm. he doesn't see that or his dad doing that so yeah yeah i i wonder what's going on with him really because he had that injury. He came back within what six months, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder if there was just a, like a combination of that, maybe coming back too soon, or I don't know what painkillers or whatever he took, like because it, it just seemed like it it just came out all of a sudden. Or actually, January two thousand eighteen is when it started happening, or something. He probably took a lot of PCP. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm only, I'm only joking because it's such a dark issue. But uh, I mean, truth be told, sometimes, sometimes uh, Tony seems like a guy in that in that kind of psychosis. So yeah, I, I just I hope everything's yeah I hope everything's well. I just hope it's it's. I know this is going to be a long process. It's just I kind of don't even care about his fighting right now. You know, mm-hmm. I feel it's going to make things worse. I, I just hope. I just hope he at least figures what it is and it can be alleviated somehow. Yeah. And if it's, you know, like brain trauma or whatever it is, then maybe, yeah, hopefully they'll figure it out. If the best thing is for him to not bite again, then yeah, you know, don't, don't come back. You're not healthy. You need to take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So here's, here's the hoping for the best. Um, Moving from that, there's a boxing fight this weekend. Errol Spence Jr. is, fighting Mikey Garcia. It's on pay-per-view. It's going to be at AT&T Stadium, the you know, Dallas Cowboy Stadium in Texas. It's a very anticipated fight with the hardcore boxing fans. I don't I don't think this will do that good on pay-per-view. I don't think they have that recognition yet, but as far as the potential, it can it can really be something. It, it can be fight of the year stuff, like legit. I I guess uh, I'm I'm not so familiar with Errol Spence. I I know Mikey Garcia very well. I'm not so familiar with Errol Spence, but I've seen his highlights. I've seen his record. It's very impressive. You know, he went to the Olympics. He's very accomplished, and he has a very interesting style. But uh, Garcia can hit like a truck. He's had some brutal knockouts, but he's moving up two weight classes. Who knows what this can entail? And just having to be in that stadium, Spence being from Texas and Mikey Garcia being Mexican, Man, it can it can it can get wild in there. What what are your thoughts about the the event, the pay per view, the matchup, Rain? Dude, I can't believe nobody's really. I didn't know this until you put it on the calendar. Like I I had no idea this was actually coming up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely amongst like the hard, hard, hardcores. Not even in in fighting. Like it's like mostly boxing heads. Yeah, so I'm actually looking at the tickets right now, dude. If I was in Texas, I would I would go. Are they not that that expensive? No, not really. The lowest yeah. is like 114, and it's not even all filled up. There's like a lot of like seats still available. Well, even Pac- Pacquiao fought in that stadium a few times, and he never filled it up either. I mean, it's it's a tall task. I mean that that has to be like if you know a lot of people were saying with Pacquiao and uh, Mayweather, like that fight could have happened there, but obviously Mayweather doesn't leave Nevada. But if he had, I mean, I can only imagine the money they could have made there because they definitely would have filled it up. It probably would have sold out in a few hours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was supposed to be a big deal, man, because Garcia is fighting a bigger man. Mm-hmm. So they're both undefeated. Wow, man. Yeah. I, I don't think I have the balls to go with a prediction right now. In, <laughs> boxing, in boxing, I tend to be a little bit more, uh, I guess, go with my race. So I will probably will go with Mikey Garcia, but I realize he's got a tough road ahead of him. If he does win, man, sky's the limit. 
Uh, people have been talking that they've been wanting to see Lomachenko against them. And Lomachenko might be, if not my first, my second favorite fighter right now. But I think whether he wins or loses this fight, I think he could probably take Lomachenko out. But if it happens, I'll for sure watch that. I'll go out wherever to see that one. I'm not going to miss that one. Yeah, Spence is the favorite, and a lot yeah. of the, the pros are picking him because of his size and whatnot. But And his experience, too. I mean, Garcia's experience as well, but... Mm-hmm. Being in the Olympics and at that weight class, and yeah, it's a, it's a whole another ball game. But uh, I'm, I definitely look forward to it. I, I'm trying to catch it any way I can. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see how it happens. We'll probably talk about this later. If it if it is the war that I that it could be, I'm I'm sure everyone's going to be talking about this. Yeah, definitely be following Twitter. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Speaking of Twitter, though. Um, Doing fan questions. This is the first for us. We've attempted it a few times, but either never got enough questions or just got busy. But since we didn't review anything, I figured we'd give a shout out to the fans. So go down the list. Um, I think I'm going to have you. An- well, I'll answer them as well, Reen, but I'll, I'll ask and you answer and then we'll go from there. So I'll start with uh, Bella Obe. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I, I Seems like a hard name to pronounce, but at Foxy79, she asked, let's talk how underrated Tom Breeze actually is. And Tom Breeze is fighting uh, this weekend. I am a big fan of Tom Breeze, but um, I have, uh, you, you know about Tom Breeze, Reen? Have you seen his fights? Have you, have you kept up with him? No, not really. Not really? Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty good. I've always had my eye on him. Um I know it sounds weird now, but he knocked out Casal Pendred. Yes, that Casal Pendred, Connor's homie, who had like the most boring fights ever. But he was also notorious for being very tough and not being able to get knocked out, and he knocked him out uh, brutally. But uh, he's only had one loss in the UFC. He's only had one loss in his career against Sean Strickland, and it's it's funny because of <laughs> that was a weird fight because they're both bald tall white dudes and this is when the fight kits were just black and white so I kind of have a feeling it would, he may have won that fight because uh, it was a very close fight but they may have just given it to the other guy because they kept getting confused uh he not he knocked out Dan Kelly in his last fight uh that was oh the Thompson for still fight so yeah almost a year ago he's had a bit of a layoff but this guy he's fighting is no he looks he looks promising Ian Heinish he's off the contender series, beat uh, Cesar Machanch, who's not that great, you know, as, as good as he used to be, I guess. But to beat him on your first UFC fight, that's it's pretty impressive. So I guess I'll pick Tom Breeze because he's like the more experienced guy, but I'm not counting out Heinish. But yes, Bella, Tom Breeze is very good. He's a good, uh, good question there. Um, Sandy Martin. Sandy Martin at Sandy Martin uh, MMA. She asked, "Do you think Maya actually beat Masvidal in that split decision? Do you remember that fight, Rain? Mm-hmm. No, it was, I know it's been so long. Yeah, when was that? That was it two, was it two years ago? I think so. Oh yeah, I think it was a Stipe versus JDS. Yeah, yeah, it's almost two years ago. Yeah, that was before the uh, the Wonder Boy fight. From what I remember, I remember when I saw it, I did think Maya won." And um, the reason I, I said that is because it was very close. It was basically like Masvidal was having his way until he wasn't. And the thing is that he was getting like taken down and dominated like halfway in through the rounds. So it's a thing of just like, do you count the strikes more or the grappling more? I ended up giving it to Maya because although it was close and I tend to prefer stand up, I mean, I've trained in Muay Thai, so it's what I know and it's kind of why I got into the sport and stuff. I gave it to Maya because he was pressuring and um, that's not the greatest reason to give it to him, but that's definitely how the judges see it. So I wasn't surprised he won the decision, but the thing is Masvidal was hitting him. He was accurate, but he wasn't hurting him that much. And um, so it was just a thing of like, do you count the strikes, just the, the volume of the few that he landed, or do you count the control, the control on the ground? And uh, when he was on the ground, Masvidal could do next to nothing. So, that's the reason I ended up giving it to Maya is that when Maya was fighting his fight, he was completely dominant. And when Masvidal was fighting his fight, he was dominant, but not completely. So at that time, I did give it to Maya. 
I may have to look back at it. Uh, I might change my mind, but I remember when I did see it, I did give it to Maya. But I knew it was going to be controversial. Yeah, I got to watch that one. Because, uh, yeah, it's almost two years ago. It was yeah. May 2017. Yeah, it's definitely been a while. And it wasn't like the most high profile fight. That was after he knocked out Cerrone. So it was like he was just getting up there. And then I think people kind of forgot about it. Like, if had he won, people would have remembered. But since that was Maya when he was like, at his most killer self, people kind of forgot. I think that was the last fight before he fought Woodley as well, so people kind of forgot. But um, moving on, one a uh, few more questions. Al Raz at Al Raz Eleven said, "Hey, you guys think there will be there will ever be a 165 division in the UFC?" He has a few questions, but let's start with that one. What do you think? Dude, I don't think so. No. I, I thought that for a while. But I'm starting to lean that, yes, it will happen. It's just a matter of when. Really? Because I thought Dana didn't care about having all these other weight classes. You know you know how it goes with Dana. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, um, I, I say that because uh, I'd be hesitant if things were how they were. But uh, the more and more I think about it, unfortunately, I think that they're going to get rid of flyweight. Uh, it, it really seems no reason to think that they're going to stay uh, – it, um, the only way it can stay is if, you know, Cejudo and Dillashaw are going to fight again. It's just, like, no secret. If Cejudo can, like, I don't know, flying knee knock him out or, like, rampage slam Dillashaw and, like, knock him out, have, like, a spectacular win everybody loves and wants to see Cejudo fight, then, yeah, it might stay. Uh, I don't know how the rematch is going to go, but I think it's – I don't think it's going to be that that big of a deal. Uh, I kind of even have the feeling that they'll put it on pay-per-view as a main event and know that they might lose money to put it on just to be like, oh, see, well, nobody cares. Nobody cares because it's a flyweight. So, Or I don't know. Uh, Cejudo goes up. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I just don't see good things. So I think if they're going to cut these guys, eventually they'll be more open to adding a division, especially in a division where one, between 155 and 170, a lot of guys walk around somewhere close to that weight so i think they they won't be lacking for talent so the only question is when i i think it's still a ways away i i think a minimum of three years i don't think it's going to happen that soon oh then your good friend ben Askren won't be around what do you mean because <laughs> he's the one that's like kind of campaigning for that right i think the one that's campaigning for it most has been kevin lee that's the guy that i first heard say it and the guy that wouldn't shut up about it yeah, well, your good friend Ben can't yeah. stop talking about it. I don't. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, I give Ben his credit. He's very talented, and he could beat most people at 170. I just don't think he could beat everybody, and I just can't wait to see him lose. 165, it'll it'll be weird because it'll be 170. It'll be welterweights. It'll be lightweights. Um, I don't know. And then the thing is, like with lightweights too, it's like. Even if you look at the top guys, Connor, Khabib, Ferguson, I know they all have their drama right now, unfortunately. But, you know, those are the top guys in the division, and they could all go up. They could easily be good at 165, but I still think Ben beats them. I, I don't know. I don't I don't want to talk about that guy. Why, why you got to bring him up? We're having a good time, and you just, much Sorry. like bringing him to the party, he just fucking kills it. Sorry, you brought up 165, and he's, like, talking about, oh, he's going to be the champ at 165. His good friend, you know, Woodley's going to be, you know, champ. They're both going to have belts. It's going to be a good time. But well, goes, Woodley lost his belt, so. That goes to show how much I pay attention to. Anyway, another question the dude asked, uh, Al Raz asked, Mikey for the Spence, who you got? The bigger Spence or the smaller Garcia? Mikey has gone up two weight classes for this fight and has been clamoring for it for some time. Confident he could beat Spence. Um, I said I'm basically going for Garcia because I'm Mexican and for not uh, many other reasons. I don't know. <laughs> Blindly going into it, if you had to bet, Reen, I guess who would you go for? God damn it. Well, I have to say Garcia because he's from Cali. Okay, good enough. So. Yeah, you at least have that uh, loyalty to him, so I can respect that. And yeah. then he has Tiller, George, and we said I'm going Till, you're going George. So yep. Yep. that answers yep. that question. And then last but not least, uh, Ashley, the MMA nerd, or former guest, um, she asked, this was after the uh, Wichita card this weekend, so it's a little, a few days back, but still. She said, rate the card 1 through 10. Remembering the card, I, 
grades, if I had to say, I'd probably give it like a six. Like it was okay, wasn't bad, but I guess nothing that special. What would you go with, Rain? Yeah, seven. Seven, yeah. yeah. Well, as you said, do you think the winner of the main event should fight Ngannou next of uh, Lewis and Dos Santos? Obviously, that was uh, Dos Santos. If no, who should they fight next? God damn. I don't even know what's up with that division, man. Yeah, we kind of went over it on the bonus episode, right? I mean, yeah. it's kind of wide open. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and I did mention on that show that I did think that the Santos should fight in Ghana because it just makes the most sense. Yeah, we're really not sure what's happening with the champ right now, so it would make sense to do it. And then this is another one specifically to you, Reen. She said, how does Reen feel about BJ Penn coming back for another fight? <laughs> you too, Juice, but I know she feels about BJ the way I do too, LOL. Why we got to talk about this right now? <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, Clay Greed is not a good fight. I mean, it would have been ten years ago, right? I don't want to see years. this. I don't want to see this. Why? And then, um, you know, Guida, how badly he just knocked out Joe Lozon not too long ago. That that's what keeps sticking in my mind. Like Guida never really was the guy with power, and all of a sudden he knocked Lozon dead. I know Lozon's past his prime, but you want to talk about being past your prime, BJ fits that bill very well. I don't like it, man. I'm getting misty eyed right now. Well, where it's supposed to happen in Brazil, BJ has a pass down there, and they respect him. Everyone loves him, so everyone's gonna be booing Guido, pretty sure. So at least he'll have the fans behind him. Man, I, let it be the last one, please. <laughs> a little bit off topic, but like Diego Sanchez and the, the 235 card. He beat the shit out of Mickey Gall. And people were, like, so happy. It was, like, his first finish in, like, 12 years. I just have a feeling, like, if BJ pulls off the upset, people are going to feel the same way. And they're, like, I just kept saying during that fight, like, Diego, good, good, you won. Please retire. But BJ being BJ, if he wins, come on, man. There's no way that dude's even going to think of it. He's probably not even going to think of it if he loses. Ah, uh, damn it. That's not a good note to end on, but unfortunately... Thanks to you, Ash, we have to do it. So there you go. You made my co-host all sad. But uh, uh, done with the MMA stuff. We're still technically in fighting stuff, but this is our news sec- uh, segment. Um, man, this is uh, both tragic yet kind of funny. Headline is, guns down, gloves up, event promoting nonviolence ends in gunfire. This was from KLFI. It's uh, in Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, I know there's uh, some listeners and some fans of ours that Twitter followers that are from Louisiana, so shout out to you guys. Uh, but yeah, a 22 year old man was shot last night after an event which focused on ending gun violence. What can you even say about this? <laughs> <laughs> See, we start laughing. I'm sorry. Um, he is yeah. not dead. Just so you guys know, he, he's in stable condition last we checked, but. Uh, yeah, he's doing okay, but when yeah. I read it, I was like, what the hell? I started cracking up, and then watching the news report on it, and then reading it, I was like, god damn, that sucks. Because I think he got shot like four times, right? Four times, yeah. Stable condition, but did get shot four times. Yep. That's crazy. At at this, He wasn't even really at the event. I think it happened like a couple blocks down or something, but this event was it wasn't even like approved by the city either. It's just a bunch of people in the neighborhood like, hey, fuck it, let's fight it out instead of shooting each other, which, you know, their hearts are in the right places, but uh, yeah, yeah, you, you can't account for pe- people. I'm assuming it's probably not the best neighborhood. People have beefs and they, they settle their disputes with guns. Well, it's a little hard to go back with the, you know, throwing fisticuffs and shit. Yeah, so they're looking for the people that held the event so they could find them or, you know give him some kind of penalty but had they had done it the right way maybe this wouldn't have happened because they would have had like cops there or maybe like the ambulance there you know there's people there that can regulate to a point i mean it's a bad neighborhood in the first place but i think this is just a a a thing in america you know with our guns and just with our culture because um i've seen things like this before uh there's uh, countries that uh, and obviously it's not like whole countries, but it's like little towns in certain countries that they do things like this. I think there was a town in Peru, a couple of countries in South America, little towns where they get together like once a year. And it's like, if you ever have beef with anybody, you guys are going to fight it out. Like 
basically squash it, like shut the fuck up or fight it out. You know, they're just not, we're not going to be going back and forth and you guys talking shit about one another. If you guys got beef, settle it, settle it or squash it type thing. And I respect that. There's a, a, a Vice documentary that I love, and this is a little different, but still, like, I guess it's just like a camaraderie thing. There's a village in Mexico that have a lot of indigenous people. They still have like an old, some old rituals and uh, they still kind of pray to the rain gods and the way that they, I guess, instead of a sacrifice of, you know, killing a pig or something like that, they fight it out. They get a bunch of alcohol. They make like their own mezcal, make food and they go out like in some open fields. It's like two towns get together and they're very friendly. They don't hate each other, but it's just been a tradition for decades. They, they get together, they meet at this like open soccer field and um, they're just like, all right, you, you want to go? You want to go? Okay. Boom. And they just, they, they fight until one of them bleeds or until they just quit. So like the whole thing is like a drop of blood equals a drop of rain. So it's like, that's the way that they appease their gods and it's been going on for decades. So it's just interesting that there's other cultures in the world that do it, but for some reason it doesn't work out here sometimes. Man, bad things happen. Oh, crazy man life okay, in america yeah. sometimes you know yeah. we have shootouts over dumb shit and then we have college briberies with the elite god damn it i know it's bad all around but we can make fun of this shit so yeah. there's at least we got that going on for ourselves and hopefully you guys enjoy it too but anyway that's gonna it's gonna do it for tonight i want to thank all you guys for listening uh you can find us on Twitter at Juice underscore MMA at Fox with you. Twitter and Instagram. The show account is at yeah, is at iFox with Juice on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we're basically everywhere you can find us: iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Podcast Republic, iHeartRadio. You name it, we're there. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for the questions. Thank you guys for interacting with us, and uh, hope to see you guys next week. See ya. Oh, shout out to Nemesis. Hi. <laughs>